Let's see, the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. A, sec a first conversation, I beg your pardon, is that the governors of the Federal Republic of Nigeria have decided that they will increase funding for primary health care. I mean, that sounds like, you know, uh, Santa Claus coming quite early. But a bit of it to what led to all of this is that at the launch of the primary health care center leadership challenge in the state house, Abuja, the Nigerian Governors Forum pledged to increase funding for primary health care. Now, Governor Kayo De Faemi, who spoke on behalf of the 36 state governors, promised that prompt release of approved budgets to the state PHC, that's the primary health care institutions. The state also pledged to recruit requisite health workforce to ensure that all primary health care facilities have the minimum staffing required for their level in line with the state's minimum service package. Now, on behalf of all of us, the statistics governors and members of the NGF, this is our statement of commitment to strengthen the primary health care system in Nigeria. Following the induction to the Seattle Declaration by the 36 states governors in November 2019, hereby affirm our commitment to strengthen the primary health care system in the country. We therefore adopt and confirm our commitment in line with the Seattle Declaration as outlined. Uh, it includes improving the governance of primary health care system at the sub-national level by fully implementing the primary health care under one roof policy and providing active leadership for primary health care through regular engagement with relevant primary health care stakeholders and quarterly primary health care performance review at the state executive council meetings. Uh, the recruit requisite health workforce, we talked about that prior to now, to ensure that all primary health care facilities have the minimum staffing and what have you at the levels that it should. And so these were the consent and thoughts of these governors as they were represented. Now, institute the culture of use of evidence for decision making by ensuring that data quality across the primary health care facilities is improved. We have Dr. Tui. Meba Wandu, who is a public health expert all the way. Uh, he joins us right here via Zoom in Lagos. Dr. Tuyi, it's good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Mm. How do you respond and how do you react to this development by the governors? Although not entirely because 22 of them were present and so it felt like not everyone. But what's your response? Uh, well, um, let's, make, let's be clear. The, the greatest requirement, the biggest requirement in our strategic health development plan, um, you know, of course, under that plan, there are five pillars. There are 15 priority areas. Um, the first pillar speaks to the issue of governance and leadership. And then um, the issue of governance and leadership speaks to how the much commitment the political leadership is bringing into um, driving the primary health care system. The political leadership um, represented by the president or the governor will determine what is going to be the basic um, health care provision fund. They're going to determine how to staff. They're going to determine how to drive um, the narratives in the primary health care system. So um, rightly so, we need those kind of conversation to enhance and improve, um, uh, you know, uh, the primary health care system in Nigeria. Don't forget, out of the 30,000 primary health care systems all over the country, barely 6,000 of them are functioning. And of course, you know the challenges. One, fund, money, money, money. Um, we're not having money to do a lot of things. I don't know if we equip it appropriately. Um, the basic um, health care provision fund, which is 1% uh, of the uh, consolidated revenue, it has been decreasing. In 2018, it was 55 billion. Now, by 2021, it came to 35 billion. I mean, you can see how this is reducing. Nigeria is having financial challenges. Thank God for partnership, okay, um, from some of those partnerships. Um, what's it called? Bill America, Mental Gates Foundation, the Seattle Declaration, trying to incentivize uh, performance at that level. But it's good to speak. We just hope that the speaking then translates to action and we see that this primary health care system uh, starts functioning. 
and function under the private health care under one roof, P PHC core, um, which means that one management, one plan, one monitoring and validation, one authority. I hope we're going to see that happening with this declaration. All right, uh, Dr. T, you, can, you, you talked about, because I'm not sure that I got you, and I'm also sure how many persons heard what you said, but did, he, did you say that out of uh, how many thousand healthcare uh, centers that have... Uh, centers in Nigeria, 30,000 over the nation, barely 6,000 of them are functioning. That is the data. Why? Well, you know... Fund is an issue, um, and I've itemized how the funds are in short supply. Human resources is another issue. Monetary and evaluation is another issue. So there are a lot of gamuts of issues um, confronting the private healthcare system for them to be able to provide the basic health um, uh, uh, services, the basic plan for the nation. So um, now, if you have this kind of people coming around, and saying that in uh, uh, terms of Bill and Melinda Gill Foundation, that was the foundation coming around, and incentivizing good practices, you know, giving incentives for good practices and proper healthcare system. We should embrace it, but I can assure you that because money is involved, the governors are talking now. We hope they can sustain that speech. Okay. Uh, because all talks, that's really net website action is not. Mm. Dr. Tui, let's, let's also look at, you know, the structure and scope, you know, of uh, uh, the primary health care. If you look at the, uh, the structure of the healthcare system in Nigeria, it, it, it cuts across the theory of government. So you have the federal, you know, the state and the local government. And so why do we still have the, the governors, um, you know, meddling in the affairs of the local government? Because... If we say that it cuts across the three tiers of government, then the local government should be solely responsible for the administration of the primary health care, you know, at the local government level. So I'd I like to get all of that. No, no, it, 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 no one cannot solely, of course, we expect the action to be at the community level, okay? Now, the primary health care system are actually the most basic health provision um, where we have the community participating. Um, and then, of course, it is regulated by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, and also, um, is, which is also domiciled in the State Primary Health Care Development Agency, uh, who ensures that the basic provisions, um, essential services, uh, how to prevent for emergency, how to ensure funding and research, are mainstreamed into the primary health care at the local government level. Okay. Now, yes, we, we see that every year, but the funding for that will definitely come from um, different sources. One of the major sources of funding is the um, basic health care fund, which, um, is, which accrues from 1% consolidated revenue from the, of the federal government and some of these donors. Okay? And normally we expect the state to actually put money into that primary health care development um, uh, at, at the local government level. We expect donors to also put money. But what we're seeing is that we've seen shortage of funds from different levels, from the federal government, from the state government, and the donors are actually being careful what they fund. So uh, that has led to um, challenges, serious challenges in terms of um, delivery of services at that primary health care level. So what we're seeing now essentially is the commitment, because leadership is very key if you want to actually get results in terms of the, you know, outcomes in primary health care, primary health care level. Leadership is key. Leadership will determine the fund that comes in. Leadership will determine, you know, how we, we fund is utilized, how the place is start. Now, the other key thing is that human resources, you know, for health at those levels, they are just inadequate. How do you want to drive primary health care services without human resources? Those ones are just inadequate. Now, we need fun to do all these things. Now, we see governors making commitments. We love the commitment. We love the way the partners have incentivized the performance at that new government level, announcing grants, announcing awards for those new governments that perform about 13 awards. We love those things. 
Well, we just hope that the governor can actually mobilize money, mobilize my resources to try to function at that level. That is exactly how it is. Now, uh, you, you, you have mentioned, you know, the responsibility of the federal government. But once upon a time, about in 2018, the former minister, uh, you know, the minister of, of health, Isaac Adewale, says that, you know, the primary health care is not really the responsibility you know, of the federal government. So, um, yeah, he, he mentioned that. It's not the responsibility, but out of the local government. So why should we uh, be talking about, you know, the federal government being responsible here now? I, I don't know what uh, Iwale was talking about. Let's get it straight. Um, there are three types of government, of health care system in Nigeria. The first one is primary health care, okay? And then the primary health care you know, speaks to the majority of the population of Nigeria, okay? Majority of the population. The policy framework, the, the trust of that primary health care is determined by the National Council of Health. Okay? The National Council of Health involves a lot of people, federal government, commissioner of health, um, permanent secretary, different state ministers of health, donors, they come together and do a framework. Who is now to implement this framework? Okay, who is going to supervise it? The supervisory role is based in National Primary Health Care Development Agency, domicile in Abuja. They receive the consolidated revenue from 1%, they receive it, and then dispose it down to the state primary health care development agency, and then define actually the kind of um, packages that are supposed to be rendered. Now, even when you are going to do national strategic health development plan monitoring and evaluation, or you are going to do joint annual review or midterm reviews, it still has to come from the federal government trying to look at those indicators that you need to use to drive those things. So, like I said, I don't know what I'm is talking about. The work how to ensure that the primary health care system works reside primarily, of course, essentially with the, with the federal government, especially in terms of funding. Now, the state will not take the thing further down by monitoring, evaluation, and aggregating those data and send those data right straight you know, to the federal uh, government, which will be the input in assessing where we are as far as the system is concerned. There's no place. You know, you know what that will mean? If I think what it says that the, the primary health care is not the responsibility of the federal government. You know what that will mean? Different states, different local government will have different indicators, different uh, method of implementing anything. I don't know where that is done in the world. Okay? That means that the indicator of priority to those states may be different from the federal Lagos state, may be different from the federal state, or, state, or, or for that, court. that means that we have a disjointed health system and we cannot be able to monitor. So I, I don't know what. That prof was talking about essentially. Sincerely, when you're talking about policy direction, the primary health care under one policy came from the federal government. Okay? The primary health care system of the basic health provision came from federal government, which has to now be domiciled in state. Well, what maybe what he was talking about is that looking at that, the, 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 the actual activities that should reflect should be happening at the local government. But in terms of policy and direction, it has to come from the federal government. Simple. Well, well uh, b because if you look at it, I mean, the way the uh, the way you have the primary health care being organized or uh, being structured, I mean, you say it's part of the three-tier system of government. So you have the federal government, you have the state government, and you have the local government. And that's how it is. And that's why you have, you know, the tertiary, you know, you have the secondary, and you have the primary health care. Okay, so whichever comes first. Maybe it's based on that premise that he's coming from. That uh, there's some level of administration. If something goes wrong, then you need to ask, you know, those who are at the hem of affairs of controlling it. Local government, state, federal government, and, uh, you know, state government. That's what, that, I'm sure that, that the argument is coming from that premise. But on the other hand, let's also, let's also look at the budget allocation because... Uh, maybe we, we have to talk about the financing. Not that I'm holding brief for the former minister here. But if you look at, you know, the budgetary allocation every other time, it should trickle down, you know, to what happens in different strata. And so whatever is allocated, you know, to the health sector uh, should also affect, you know, the state and the local government. And we haven't really fared well 
with our location with the budget for the health sector. Uh, we, we, we have not really met, you know, the 15 percent uh, Abuja declaration, as it were. So we're still dwindling between five, six, seven percent in terms of budgetary allocation. Do you think that this might also be the issue or it's also the issue that the former. Um, it's also the issue that's, you know, at stake here. And it's also the issue that the former minister is also addressing in terms of how um, the lean resources are being managed. Well, well, um, my professor told me, if you want to change the health system, follow the money. You need money essentially to mobilize human resources, to pull infrastructure, to maintain those infrastructure, to do monetary evaluation. Health system is heavily money dependent. Um, Nigeria is not doing well at all in terms of health financing. Um, first and foremost, we are doing 5%. Like I already said, we have the best we have done with about maybe this percent about uh, eight, nine years ago um, for health budgets. And most of those budgets are actually recurrent expenditure. It's not in it. Um, but we have seen some support, a lot of support from the donors, okay? Um, donors, and then until we now pass the uh, the, the health act bill, the uh, health bill, which is from uh, National Health Act, um, putting one percent of consolidated revenues of the federal government into primary health care. One percent of primary health care. In 2018, that one percent was 55 billion naira. You have put 55 billion naira to get that for 30,000 primary health care centers nationwide. You know what that means. And it's not all the money. Yeah, because part of the money could be used to maintain some other things, respond to emergency, you know, that's that how that money is structured. And then, uh, secondly, by the, by the year 2021, the money had gone down to 35 billion. Okay? So we are seeing dwindling um, uh, revenue from that regard. People have suggested so many things, including increasing that quality revenue to 2%. I'm not even that 1%. 1% is too mega, of course. And then looking at how to raise funds, actually from other taxes, you know, like tax some smart taxes like tax tobacco, uh, taxing alcohol, and then put it in the, in the, the consolidated fund for health. And then we expect the state government to also contribute to that consolidated fund and the donor, the donors and partners. But what we have seen is that state government can barely, you know, pay the salaries of their health workers. How are you not going to get them to contribute money to their primary health care, to that basic health fund? It is challenging. So that's why, for instance, um, without that um, direction from the federal government, without that funding from the federal government, without um, leadership, without governance, without that partnership that can work, um, you know, a functioning primary health care system would be a difficult thing. Be a difficult thing. The starting point, the first pillar is. For us to create an enabling environment uh, for, for health to function. And under that enabling environment, governance, leadership, partnership, community participation, and ownership are very, very key. Mm. Dr. Tuyo, so uh, do you think that you know, uh, this governance will live up to the expectation of a statement? Because at some point, I'd like to describe you know, what was said, and you have uh, the governor of Ekiti State. Uh, fire me, coyote, or coyote, fire me, uh, putting out a statement as a policy statement. It's just a policy statement because we're not sure of implementation of the latter. Uh, we remember that with this, uh, you know, salary increment, and we're talking about the minimum wage, some governors have not really settled up until this moment with paying the 30,000 era minimum wage. That was agreed because of, oh, we don't have resources. We don't have what it takes to sustain all of that. And so do you think that it's a thing that these governors will be able to, you know, follow suit with that statement that was put, having some sort of increase? Even though it wasn't really stated, it was just said that there will be an increase and it probably would just fly as a statement, a policy statement, right? But um, do you think that the 36 states' governors would follow suit with increasing funding for the primary health care? Well, we hope so. They've said it will wait to ask whether it's going to be possible. But let's get, uh, let's get it clear. How did this statement come about? Um, it was um, in time to fulfill the Seattle uh, Declaration, um, primary health care of that world, um, you know, improve funding, 
um, governance. One of the key things in governance tells is what we call uh, other official plan called AOPs. Um, AOP is supposed to actually, you know, structure the health system and look at the budget and everything, and then you put that AOP to the budget. The AOP should come, which is what other, other official plan should come before the budget is set. Okay, so um, what the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and their partners are doing is to say, okay, look, guys, um, if you can follow through in this regard and follow all these clear indicators, I will score you and find out that you are so good. We'll give you, I'm going to give you additional money. Okay, we're going to support you furthermore. We're going to give uh, about 13 awards, uh, uh, looking at different geopolitical zones. Okay, nice. That's what they're telling them. And of course, when this governor hears about money, when the governor when they hear about money, it was okay. Well, they have to make policy statement. But the point is this: a policy statement does not actually translate into um, tangibles until you work the plan. And working the plan means that you have to get committed people, um, get the, re the requisite number of um, human resources component. You have to get the requisite monitoring and evaluation. You have to get the requisite funding. So we hope that the, the governors will look at this and improve the funding to actualize this thing. So you have to get the right community participation and ownership. You have to be able to get the feedback from those community. Some of those things involve ordinary meetings. Um, if you look at some of those states, they've never had partnership meetings for a long time. If you don't have partnership meetings, how do you monitor? So in reality, that is what we have been seeing looking around the health system in Nigeria. So ordinary AOP, and what you call annual operation plan for health, it's not done. Uh, ordinary council of state, the, the state council okay, of health Dr. meeting, two e. of health. So how do you now assess health system in that kind of state? We just hope that it's not going to be just a, a statement like we, we've been saying. Um, hope something comes out of it. Well, uh, we have to go now. I, I wish we had more time to talk about this. But thank you so much, Dr. Tuyi Meba Wandu. Uh, he's a public health expert right here in Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, then. That's the size of a conversation. But fingers are really crossed. Every other time, it feels like it's very convenient for us to put out statement, chunk out policies. Uh, you have these governors. Governors who have really not been in agreement with the payment of the minimum wage. Will also there be an agreement to increase, you know, funding for the primary health care? which is very, very important for our economy. That's the size of our conversation. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be talking sports. Stay with us. <laughs>